In this video, I'm going to cover buffer solutions. A buffer is a solution that resists changes in pH when an acid or base is added. Uh, these, act, these solutions act by neutralizing the added acid or added base. Um, and the way that they do this is by containing significant amounts of a weak acid and its conjugate base or the weak base and its conjugate acid. So it has to be a conjugate acid base pair and there has to be a significant amount of each one. So here's an example. Um, remember how you tell a weak acid from a strong acid. There are only six strong acids uh, HCl, HBr, HI, H2SO4, HNO3, and HClO4. So those are the only six strong acids. So any other acid is a weak acid. And generally, we can tell an acid because it has an H at the front of the formula. The only time that that's not true is when we're looking at acids uh, that are called carboxylic acids, like this. This is acetic acid. So acetic acid has this COOH. This group right here is an acidic group. This H on the end is an acid. And sometimes when we write the formula for acetic acid, we, this H does appear at the front. But sometimes when we write the formula for this acid, the H appears here at the end as part of the COOH group. So this one is a little bit trickier to identify as an acid. But if I was looking at this entire equation here, then and I know that there's an acid on one side and a base on the other side, a conjugate base on the other side, then I know that I'm looking at this pair right here right and the difference between this compound and this compound on the other side the only difference is that it's missing H plus this one has an H plus and this one does not have an H plus so the one that does have the H is the acid and the one that uh, accepts the H on this side if we were to move from this side of the equation here going backwards in this reaction this base would accept an H plus and it would become its conjugate so remember, this is how conjugate acid-base pairs work. The acid is going to donate its H, and it's going to become a base. The base is going to accept an H, and it's going to become the conjugate acid. So they're related, and the only way that they're different, the only difference is an H+. plus. So um, a buffer contains both of these compounds. It contains a weak acid and its conjugate base. So it can't just be a weak acid and any weak base. It has to be a weak acid and specifically the conjugate base of that weak acid. They have to be related such that their only difference between them is H+. And they also have to be present in a significant amount. If I only had one drop of acetic acid in a liter of water and one drop of sodium acetate in a liter of water, that wouldn't be enough to make a buffer. There wouldn't be enough of the weak acid and, the, and its conjugate base. So I have to have both of them, a weak acid and its conjugate, and there has to be a significant amount of both. Um, depending on whether there's an equal amount of both, we say that that solution has a different uh, buffering capacity for acid or base. It would be able to handle a different amount of acid or base. So when the amount of weak acid and weak base in the solution are equal, like they are here, then if I added acid, then this solution would resist changes to the pH when I add acid to it. If I add base to the solution, it will also resist changes to pH. And it would do that, the acid and base, it would handle them in an equal, an equal amount of each, because I have an equal amount of weak acid and weak base in the buffer to react with them, to neutralize them. So um, the way that a buffer solution can resist a change in the pH of the solution when an acid is added to it or a base is added to it is that it, the solution contains acid and base that can react with any added H3O plus or any OH minus that's added to that solution. So for example, if a strong base is added, it's neutralized by this acid. So if I add OH minus, to this solution right here, a solution that contains these two components, the OH minus is going to react with this H plus right here, and OH minus and H plus are going to make water, and then if I take this H plus off, this 
is going, this acid is going to turn into this, right? It would just become the conjugate base, o, COO minus. And so then I would have less COOH because it reacted, and I would have more COO minus because the COOH became its conjugate base when the H plus was removed. And conversely, if I add acid to a buffer solution, the way that it the it resists changes to pH is that this H plus right here gets added to this conjugate base to the OO minus and then when H3O plus loses an H plus it becomes water and when COO minus gains that H plus it is converted into its conjugate acid right here right because the only way that these are different the only difference is between is uh, one H plus particle one H plus ion so Adding acid is going to convert the base into conjugate acid. And adding base is going to convert the acid into conjugate base. So when I add OH minus, what happens is the OH minus gets turned in to COO minus. And when I add H3O plus, the H3O plus gets turned in to COOH. So what that means is that when I, when I add OH minus, it kind of disappears. It gets converted into this in water pretty quickly because the solution contains something to neutralize that OH minus. And when I add H3O plus to that solution, it also gets converted into water and weak acid because it contains the components to neutralize that acid. So the way that a buffer resists changes to pH is by neutralizing the OH minus that's added and neutralizing the H3O plus that's added. It gets turned into water and the conjugate acid or the conjugate base. So let's see that here as an animation. So if we add OH minus to the solution, OH, I have these two components. I have a weak acid and its conjugate base. And the only difference between HA and A minus is H plus, right? So if I add base, is base going to react with the acid or is the base going to react with the base? The base is going to react with the acid, right? So the base reacts with the acid. And when the base reacts with the acid, turns that acid into A minus, right, and, and some water. OH minus and H plus is going to make some water, so this H2O out here, I'll get more water. But also, when I remove the H plus, I turn it into A minus. So that A minus is going to go over here and add to the amount of A minus I have. So let's go back here. When I add OH minus, It makes it disappears, the OH minus disappears, but it makes the A minus bigger. So then I have more A minus. Okay, so what happens if I add acid? If I add acid to this buffer solution, is the acid going to react with the acid or is the acid going to react with the base? Well, the acid will react with the base. And when it does that, H plus, one of these H's, is going to react with A minus and it's going to turn into HA and more water, right? And then that HA is going to go over here and add it, and then I'll have less A minus because it reacted with the acid, and more weak acid because the weak base was converted into weak acid. So um, remember, when we're calculating the pH of a solution, the way that we calculate the pH is by focusing on H3O plus or OH minus. So pH equals negative log of H3O plus, right? So when I have a buffer solution, I have HA and I have A minus, right? The pH does not equal the negative log of the HA concentration. HA it does affect the pH, and we we'll talk about that. Remember earlier in this chapter when we were talking about um, uh, how to calculate the pH of a weak acid. We do that with an ice table. So a weak acid does affect the pH, but it doesn't, we, what, we're really tr what we're really after when we're looking at a weak acid is how much H3O plus does it have. And so the pH is affected by H3O plus, and conversely, the pH is affected by OH minus, right? So if we look at the pOH, that's the negative log of the OH minus concentration. And pOH and pH are related to each other. pH plus pOH equals 14. So 
When we're looking at a buffer, we're really interested in um, it, the fact that it can resist changes in pH. And the way that it does that, look, the pH is related to how much H3O plus there is. But if we go back and check this out, when I add H3O plus, it disappears. The H3O plus that I add disappears. So when I'm coming down here and I'm trying to calculate the pH, as H3O plus. Then when I, I have some amount of H3O plus in this solution before I add the buffer, right? So this solution right here has a pH, and the pH of this solution right here is based on this. I'd say pH equals negative log of H3O plus. If I know how much H3O plus there is, I know what the pH of this whole solution is. It doesn't matter how much of this there is. It doesn't matter how much there, of this there is. It only matters how much of this there is, right? So then, oops, then I add H3O plus to the solution, which generally, this H3O plus is going to add to this H3O plus, making it bigger, which is going to change the pH, because the pH is a function of how much H3O plus there is. But in a buffer solution, that H3O plus that I add, it disappears. It gets turned into HA instead. And like I just said, HA and A minus, this does not affect the pH, or rather it does, but a very, it, it affects the pH much less than how much H3O plus there is. So when I have more HA, then I will, some of it will dissociate, so I will have more H3O plus in that solution but I will have much less H3O plus than what I had just added, right? This amount that I just added, that's a lot of H3O plus that I just added. And it gets converted into HA, and only a little tiny bit of this HA is going to dissociate and turn into a little bit more H3O plus. So really what's happening in a buffer is that the H3O plus that I add to the solution, a lot of it, which should have changed the pH a lot, gets converted by this mechanism, into HA, and HA only dissociates a little bit. So then that big amount of H3O plus gets turned into a small amount of H3O plus. So the pH only changes a little bit. So this equation is called the Henderson-Hasselbach equation. Um, and when we have a, a buffer solution, when we have any solution, remember, the way we're trying to find the pH is by determining how much H3O plus there is. And when I have a strong acid, I know how much H3O plus there is because it's equal to the concentration of the strong acid, because the strong acid dissociates completely. But if I have a weak acid that doesn't dissociate completely, and I want to know the pH, then I have to, calc I have to use an ice table, right? Remember that? We have a weak acid, we have to use an ice table to find how much H plus there is based on its Ka, and when I know how much H plus there is, how much that weak acid dissociates, then I can plug that into this pH equals negative log of H3O plus um, uh, equation, and I can determine the pH of that solution. So you would think then I have strong acid. Finding the pH of a strong acid is fairly easy, fairly straightforward, right? Because what I mean by that is if you have one molar HCl, then you have one molar H plus, because it dissociates completely. Weak acid, that's kind of hard to find the pH, right? Harder. Because when I have one molar HA, a weak acid, I don't know how much H plus I have. It's not immediately apparent just by looking at this, right? I have to use the Ka and do a whole ice table to find out what this number is. So weak acids are harder to find the pH because it's harder to find how much H plus I have. So then you would think if I have a mixture of weak acid, which is going to make a little bit of H plus, and weak base, which is going to make a little bit of OH minus. And the way that we would figure out how much OH minus it makes 
on a weak base would be to do an ice table with Kb. If I have a mixture of these things, it's going to be really, really hard to find the pH, right? Because I'm going to have to do a whole ice table with weak acid and find out how much H plus there is. And then I'm going to have to do a whole ice table with the amount of weak base and figure out how much OH minus there is. And then I'm going to have to figure out how much H plus and how much OH minus are going to react with each other. And then what's left over at the end of that? Do I have more H plus or do I have more OH minus at the end of that? And then plugging it in to the pH equation. <laughs> so if a strong acid is easy and a weak acid is harder, a mixture of weak acid and weak base seems like it would be really, really, really hard to find the pH of. But the Henderson Hasselbalch equation is a shortcut. This is basically a way that we can take the two ice tables that we would need in order to calculate this pH and condense all of that work down into one equation. So this shortcut right here is incredibly helpful. When we've determined that we have a buffer solution and we've determined that I have some acid and some base, finding the pH is easy. It's, pr it's you know, at least as easy as this because then here, if I have um, one molar strong acid, I know I have one molar H+. Plus. But if I have one mole weak acid, I don't know how much H plus I have. But I don't need to know how much H plus I have in this equation. I just plug the amount of HA directly into this equation. This is just HA. And this is just A minus. So now I can just use the values of HA and A minus from the equation without having to even do an ice table. So the Henderson-Hasselbalch equation makes finding the pH of a buffer much, much easier. You don't have to do any ice tables at all. So when can I use this, and when do I have to do the whole ice table thing? Well, if I have a buffer, I can use this. So we have to define what a buffer is. If I have lots and lots and lots of weak acid and only a little tiny bit of its conjugate base, that's not technically a buffer because I have to have a lot of each of them, and they have to be in fairly equal amounts. They don't have to be equal, but they should be both there in substantial amounts. So um, if those two things are true, then I have a buffer. And if I have a buffer, I can use the Henderson-Hasselbalch equation. So um, for most problems, this means that the initial acid and salt concentrations should be over 100 to 1,000 times larger than the value of Ka which just means that the concentration is significant. Generally, the, when we're talking about a weak acid, we're talking about a Ka of 10 to the minus 3, 10 to the minus 4, 10 to the minus 8. So when I have a solution that's one molar, that's a thousand times bigger than Ka. So a one molar solution is a big concentration. If I have one molar weak acid and one molar weak base, that's definitely a buffer. If I have 0.1 molar weak acid and 0.1 molar weak base, that's probably a buffer. If I have 0 0.000001 molar weak acid and 0 0.000001 molar weak base, that's potentially not a buffer. We would have to look at the Ka value. So how much does the pH of a buffer change when an acid or base is added? So calculating the new pH after adding acid or base requires breaking the problem into two parts. So we first have to figure out, once I add the acid or base, how that affects the amount of HA or A minus I have. And once I figure out how much HA and A minus I have after the addition of the acid or base, then I just plug those new values into the Henderson-Hasselbalch equation. So we'll do uh, an example like that here at the end. But generally, when I add acid, when I add H+, plus, remember, H+, plus gets turned into HA. And when I add OH-, minus, OH- minus gets turned into A-. minus. So adding acid and base is going to change how much HA and A- minus I have. And once I know in what way they have changed, do I have more or less HA? Do I have more or less A-, A minus, and how much more or less? Then I plug those new values into this Henderson-Hasselbalch equation right here. The pKa is a constant, so it's not going to change. So figuring out the pH of a, of a buffer solution only requires knowing a constant that I look up on a table, and what the concentration of HA is, the weak acid, and what the concentration of A- is, the weak base.
So we can also look at um, basic buffers. So when I'm talking about uh, an acidic buffer, that's generally one where the Ka is a stronger weak acid than its conjugate base is a weak base. So it's kind of a weak, weak base, and it's a little bit stronger of a weak acid. But conversely, if I'm looking at basic buffers, that has the opposite situation, where the Kb of the conjugate base makes that weak base fairly strong, and the Ka of its conjugate acid makes that weak acid fairly weak. So um, depending on the application, we, we use buffers to resist changes to pH in lots of different applications. Sometimes we're adding acid, in which case it helps to have a basic buffer. Sometimes our application is when we're adding base, and when we are adding base, it helps to have an acidic buffer. So um, both are both exist, both are possible, and they're just uh, kind of opposites of each other, depending on what the application calls for. So um, we can imagine that a weak base, remember a weak acid is HA plus H2O. So a weak base is just base plus H2O. And what happens with a weak base is that it takes one of these H's, so it becomes HB plus because it takes it actually it takes H plus right, and when this H2O loses H plus, it becomes OH minus, and so we designate KB as the conjugate acid times OH minus divided by the weak base. This is just analogous to Ka right when we look at the acid base um, uh, neutralization reaction, the reaction with water of a weak acid. So um, Ka and Kb are related to each other, right? Here's Ka, we have the base times the H3O plus over conjugate acid, or here we have conjugate acid times base over the weak base. So Ka and Kb are kind of uh, uh, the, uh, inversely related to each other. And so when I'm looking at um, a weak acid buffer, I focus on Ka because the acid is stronger than the base in that case, and I use an acid neutralization reaction. But when I'm looking at a basic buffer, then I focus on Kb because the base is a stronger weak base, um, and then I would use this base reaction with water, the, the reaction of a base with water to create OH minus. So I can use uh, either acids or bases in the Henderson-Hasselbalch equation. I can calculate the pH of an acid buffer by figuring out these values and plugging them in here. I can also figure out the pH of a basic buffer by figuring out these values and plugging them in here. So I don't really have to use um, a different equation when I'm looking at basic buffers. I can solve them the same way by using the pKa and just plugging in the concentration of base and conjugate acid in there. So again, Ka and Kb are related because Ka times Kb equals Kw, which is the um, dissociation constant of water when water reacts with itself. And remember, that's always equal to 1 times 10 to the minus 14. So this is a special number for water specifically. And that's why we usually look at the pH scale as being based on 14 units, because these are the 14 units of the pH scale based on how water reacts with itself, water being both an acid and a base. Um, so Ka and Kb are related to each other, and pKa and pKb are related to each other because the pKa is just the negative log of the Ka, and the pKb is just the negative log of the Kb. So pKa and pKb equal plus pKb equals 14. This is kind of like pH plus pOH equals 14. It's the same uh, it's the same relationship, just kind of stated a different way. So we've looked at, in previous sections, we've looked at Ka and Kb a lot. And when we look at buffers, we're going to look at pKa and pKb. And so the only difference between Ka and Kb, these values that I'm going to find in a table, I'll find Ka and Kb in a table, and I can convert those into pKa and into pKb by just taking the negative log negative log of this value that I find in a table, negative log of the Kb that I find in a table. That will generate the pKa and the pKb. So um, it's possible, just like it's possible to, uh, to calculate the pOH of an acidic solution, 
or the pH of an acidic solution or the pOH of a basic solution and vice versa, we can alter the Henderson-Hasselbalch equation to calculate the pOH, in which case we would just use the pKB and we'd flip these values around. But again, like I was saying back here, this, this calculation, this equation, the way that it is currently formatted is fine for calculating the pH of either acidic or basic buffer solutions because all I need to know is the pKa of the conjugate acid and the concentration of the weak base and, and weak acid. But this, is, this equation gets me to the same place. It's just kind of the using pOH and focusing on the base instead of focusing on the acid. So again, a buffer resists changes to pH. And so a good buffer means that if you add acid or base to it, the pH doesn't change very much. So we can talk about how effective a buffer is by talking about a couple of different uh, uh, characteristics of the buffer, what we call the capacity and what we call the, the range of the buffer. So we, if we have a liter of water, and I just put one small drop of conjugate acid and one small drop of weak conjugate base into that liter of water, that's not going to be a very effective buffer because the way the buffer works is by having weak acid and weak base in the solution to neutralize any H plus or OH minus that I add. If I don't have very much weak acid or weak base, then the buffer is not going to be able to do very much. So um, the buffering capacity is the amount of acid or base a buffer can neutralize. If I have a significant amount of weak acid and a significant amount of weak base in a liter of water, um, even, let's say one mole, one mole per liter means I have one molar weak acid, one mole of weak base, one, one molar weak base, that's a significant amount of each. And so that means that anytime I add H plus or OH minus to that solution, I'll have plenty of weak acid or weak base in solution to react with it at one mole. So I would have to add more than one mole of H plus in order to use up all the weak base. I would have to add more than one mole of OH minus in order to eat, use up all of the weak acid. So the buffering capacity is how much acid or base a buffer can neutralize, and that's based on how many weak acid or weak base particles there are. If I have 10 weak acid particles, then I can neutralize 10 OH minus uh, ions, right? So the number of uh, the amount of acid or base that a solution can handle is based on the number of particles of acid or base that can neutralize it in the buffer. Uh, the buffering range is the pH range the buffer can be effective. So different buffers are made of different weak acids and weak bases. And the, what makes a weak acid and a weak base, weak acids different than each other, or weak bases different than each other, is their structure, right? They have, they have different atoms stuck together, they have different shapes, and their Ka values, or their Kb values. So a buffer is effective over a certain pH range, and the pH of a buffer is a function of its Ka value, right? Remember the Henderson-Hasselbalch equation is pKa plus the log of base over acid. So the pH of a buffer solution is going to be based on the Ka of the weak acid, or the pOH is going to be based on the Kb of the weak base. So the range over which that buffer of that solution is, is capable of resisting changes to pH has to do with the Ka value or the Kb value. We call that the buffering range. So the effectiveness of the buffer really depends on these two factors, the relative amounts of acid and base uh, in the solution. And so if I have lots of weak acid and only a little tiny bit of weak base, that's not going to be a particularly effective buffer or vice versa. So it, it's better to have similar amounts of acid and base. And the at, number two, the absolute concentration of acid and base. So is it one molar of each or 0 0.000001 molar of each? What's the, what's the absolute concentration? So um, the buffering capacity is the number, the amount of H plus and OH minus a buffer can resist. So if I've got lots of A minus and lots of HA, 
then I can add lots of H plus or lots of OH minus. If I have just a little bit of OH minus, a little bit, or a little bit of HA and a little bit of A minus, I can't add as much acid or base. And once I do add too much acid or base, it's going to overcome these, it will react with these particles, and then the solution won't have the ability to neutralize any more acid, because all of the base will be gone, for example. So uh, a buffer will be most effective when the concentration of acid and base is about equal. Right? So if I have similar amounts of acid and base, about the, the same amount of each, then the, con the, the a buffer will be more effective. Um, a buffer will can still be effective if I have a ratio of about 10 on either side. If I have 10 to 1 base to acid, or 10 to 1 acid to base, I can still have a fairly effective buffer that will still resist changes to pH. But once the ratio becomes greater than that, if I have 20 times more base than acid, 100 times more base than acid, 1000 times more base than acid, at those points, that buffer is no longer effective. So generally, a buffer is only effective within a range of about 10 on either side. I can have 10 times more base than acid, or I can have 10 times more acid than base. Anything outside of that range is no longer a very effective buffer. <clears throat> so um, if we think about this, the, the 10 this ratio of 10, 10 times more basic or 10 times more acidic. If we put those numbers into the Henderson-Hasselbalch equation, then we can calculate the maximum and minimum pH at which the buffer will be effective. So essentially, remember that a logarithmic scale is one where the logarithm, as the logarithm changes by 1 or 2 or 3, it's changing by a factor of 10 each time. So 2 is 10 times 10, and 3 is 10 times 10 times 10. So we're always changing by a factor of 10. So um, pH is a logarithmic scale. So that means a pH of 7 has 10 times more H plus than a pH of 8. That has 10 times more than a pH of 9, and so on. So when the concentration changes by a factor of 10, then the pH changes by a factor of 1. Right? So if I can have 10 times more base than acid, or 10 times more acid than base, then what that means is that the pH can either be, can either go down one point, the pKa down one point, if I add about 10 times more acid, or the pH can go about up one point if I add 10 times more base. So a factor of 10 is equal to a factor of 1 in a logarithmic scale. So what that means is that the effective pH range of a buffer is the pKa of the weak acid plus or minus 1. If the pKa of an acid is 5, then the effective pH range of that buffer is between 4 and 6. It would be good as a buffer between pHs 4 and 6. If, it's any, if the pH is lower than 4, for a, buff, a buffer that has a pKa of 5, that means that I have more than 10 times more acid than base. Maybe it's 100 times more acid than base. So at that point, the buffer would no longer be effective at resisting changes to pH. So when you're choosing an acid to make a buffer solution, we always choose one whose pKa is closest to the pH of the buffer that we're interested in, the, the pH range that we're looking at. 